You've got to go into every inspection with an open mind. You can't take any preconceptions with you. You might read the claim circumstances and get a general feel for what is coming, but you've still got to go in with an open mind. I haven't done it for so long, I try and not preempt the customer because many times you get a note saying that the customer can be very upset. So I, I try to go on the call, being myself, as open and as honestly as I can. Listen to them, approach the let them vent their anger on why all their frustrations. Don't react, don't interrupt. The worst thing you can do, especially with a customer that's already upset, you don't want to go in nervous with your back up, almost ready for a fight. You want to go in and defuse that. As soon as you ring up, they're going to be a little bit hostile. They've obviously got things to say. The best thing is to sit back, listen to what they're going to tell you. And once they've done that, what can we do to help you now? It's let them get it off the chest first. And then after that, we've got to go with what's their side of it. Because obviously sometimes it's slightly different from what I've got written on a piece of paper. And then you can kind of empathise a little bit with them. You've had issues. You've not had the opportunity to speak with me. I've not had the opportunity to resolve whatever issues you have. So I, I try and not read too much into any issues that have happened before and more try and concentrate on how I can resolve the issue. I try and act how I would like to be done if I was upset. Try and calm them down. If they didn't, you pride a bit because they question your ability. That's the problem. You start to doubt yourself. The next thing to do is to maybe ring somebody up, put it by them. Am I right? Am I really right? So I build your own confidence up if somebody sort of says, Yo, no, you were right, you're right in what you said. So new to this as well, if somebody doubts you, you can doubt yourself, don't you? I won't say here and then whether the damage is covered. There's a couple of reasons for that. The last thing you want to do is say, oh, well, you know, this isn't covered, that isn't covered. And then when you refer to the regional engineer, they may have a different point of view. I'd never go on to a call promising a customer that I'll make everything okay. What I hope to add is some clarity. They may not get the end result they want, but at least they go off the phone with some knowledge or some clarity. So I always put it back to my own personal life when I've got an issue with any companies. It's the not understanding that causes the most frustration. What I realised very quickly was that he had a great passion for the Land Rover. He'd spent hundreds of hours on it, but I think he understood that I was interested in what he had to say. And I think because I was appreciating his work, he worked to me a little bit. I'd just take the bull to the horns and I'd settle this on the customer's behalf. Don't have the trouble policy over at all from here on. I think it is important that if we have the opportunity to engage with our agents that we should do. It's not something that I relish is well out of a comfort zone. You never really know what's going to be thrown at you, what questions they may ask. I did know they wanted to talk about NES, so I'd done a prepared presentation on that one. And that went down really well. I think they really had a greater understanding of how the operation works. But really the message for me to them was that we are all part of the same team. Their customer is our customer and it's vitally important that we all work with each other and together to ensure that we always deliver the highest possible customer service. It was interesting that his whole business, he basically hires out boats. And he's actually got an island and he hires out boats on property on there. So it was a very interesting story I had to tell about the whole business, how long he's been there, what he does. And the Land Rover was a very small part of it. But it gave me a good insight to exactly where he was coming from, what the story was of Land Rover. So it was very important to listen to what the guy had to say, really. And I would certainly encourage every staff engineer to get and build some really good relationships with their agents is really really important the more they understand of how we operate the more in tune they are with us and the more supportive they are to us what we managed to do for them was to change our approach and come back to them and it was more than he expected so the fact that we are willing to be flexible enough to do something for them really took him by surprise hello so it's quite a few hours post call the driver was it wasn't actually as bad as I thought he would be. He did break down a couple of times, which is completely understandable because the incident was absolutely horrendous. The third party was trapped in the vehicle when it was on fire and our driver tried to get him out and, and couldn't. To hear that firsthand was quite difficult, actually. In regards to how we are, I'm feeling okay. After the incident, I was listening to my happy music, driving home. And it was difficult because he's in his 50s, I'm in my early 30s and whole generation gap there as well so you know he probably feels a bit embarrassed but we did have a bit in common actually when I walked in he had a few Formula One posters up and I'm a big fan of Formula One so that helped kind of break some barriers because we were talking about that. It was a success, I'm glad it's done, it's never easy.
And I think the, the most difficult thing is you can prepare loads for them, but you don't really know how the individual's going to react. You know, dealing with that can be difficult. 